Hey everybody, Michael Snyder, Worldwide Weather Watch. Today is October 22nd, and right now we are looking at the visible satellite imagery. You can see the sun setting across the lower 48 states, across portions of Mexico, sun setting there across portions of South America. You can see some of that convection there across the South American continent as well. But also we got some shenanigans going on here across some of the tropics. And I'll be looking at that in a bit of detail. You might start to hear some chatter about what would possibly become Hurricane Melissa as we go through the next few days. So we'll dive into some of those details here, but we're going to take some uh, looks across the rest of the planet here as well, including across the Western Pacific Ocean and the North Pacific Ocean, where we have the strongest jet stream on the planet right now. It extends all the way from Japan, all the way out across Pacific Ocean. This is bringing some very active weather here into the Pacific Northwest over the next few days as well. And if we take a look, I froze it right here. This is supposed to be tomorrow, Thursday, 214 knots. You're talking about way up over 230 miles per hour. This is the biggest and the baddest jet stream on the planet here, October 23rd, including the Southern Hemisphere. And if I put that into motion, you kind of see how that is extending across the Pacific Ocean, bringing an atmospheric river into the Pacific Northwest. And if we take a look across the Southern Hemisphere, just to kind of do our due diligence, you can see that, yeah, that jet stream is the strongest on the planet right now now some interesting stuff here with two meter temperature now we can still see we got some cooler weather there across portions of china mongolia out there and look at just how warm we are across some of the north pole some areas right around 30 degrees above normal for this time of year look at some of this warmth moving up across out into over the arctic ocean so kind of interesting there as well now if we take a look also that uh, that arctic high out there is what's you know keeping that cold air around this should be kicking out of here and they're going to warm up but again some very cold conditions out across portions of asia and look at that low pressure system across the gulf of alaska again and powered by this powerful jet stream and we're going to be dealing with some storms here in the pacific northwest from that jet stream but this is where we're looking at uh, as of uh, this what well, this afternoon now, the Joint Typhoon Warning Center, just a few tropical systems out there. Nothing too extreme across the Western Pacific for now. There is a tropical cyclone out there across the Indian Ocean right now also. And taking a look here. Now, we're going to start to home in on Melissa a little bit there. You can see that we are dealing with a tropical storm right now. Still dealing with some wind shear. But, man, this water is extremely warm out there. And the wind shear should be waning here over the next couple of days. It's going to take its sweet time. And then she's going to start to really drop in pressure here. Maybe move back across Jamaica. Impact portions of Cuba. And it's a good thing this is not moving into the Gulf. Because it's a very powerful storm. And it should be pushed off to the north and east from this next trough. It'll be swinging across across the lower 48 states. I'll show you more on that here in a moment. It becomes extra tropical eventually and pushes way off across the Atlantic Ocean. Now, this is the European model that you can see all the ensembles here. And none of this right now shows any kind of impact for portions of the USA. I mean, maybe some passing impacts if one of these extremely Western uh, solutions were to arise. But for the most part, you know, this is Jamaica and portions of Cuba then moving out. Something else it could do is it could pass back towards portions of the Northeast United States as well as maybe at the very end of its tropical life cycle and maybe as it's becoming extra tropical moving up towards Newfoundland or whatnot. Now, if we take a look at what is going on here, this is the artificial intelligence model. So this is where Melissa will be developing. If I put this into motion, you notice that as Melissa develops, still got this ridge here just enough to kind of keep it right near Jamaica there and then it starts to push north and this next trough really picks it up it'll speed this system up and that looks like it's going to keep it away from the lower 48 states of the United States and most models do keep it away from you know Newfoundland as well uh, and yeah then racing across the Atlantic Ocean maybe it'll come on shores a mid-latitude cyclone way up across portions of the United Kingdom who knows and if we take a look at again 500 millibar geopotential heights so if I put this into motion you can see the trough currently there a little bit of that ridge in there kind of keeping Melissa down towards portions of Jamaica but then that next trough starts to get rolling here and that's what's going to pick up Melissa and push it off to the north and east so Here's Melissa right now, again, a tropical storm, and you can see it should become a major hurricane by the time we get towards 2 p.m. on Sunday. And again, there is Jamaica right now under tropical storm warnings, and then that would be impacting Cuba as it moves to the north and east. And they do talk about this. There's pretty good uh, forecast discussions there right now. Again, tropical storm Melissa, they put these out every six hours. The National Hurricane Center does a great job there, and it is definitely the place to check back if you have interest in this storm. 
and we'll take one or two more looks at this storm here this 100 meter wind speed and again you can kind of see it on the european as of this morning just kind of spinning there right by jamaica but then it starts to really get strong here as we go on in through the day on saturday becomes a bit of a buzzsaw out there and again could become a major hurricane by the time we get towards sunday monday and then move back to the north and east and you can see the oceanic temperature again just absolute bath water out there very warm <clears throat> just ripe for tropical storm and then eventually hurricane development so taking a look across some of the Pacific Ocean as well, you can see the Western Pacific. This is typical. It's usually warmer uh, almost always than uh, what's going on across the Eastern Pacific. And you can see this cold tongue moving out there. Those are La Nina conditions across some of the equatorial Pacific Ocean. I'll probably be doing a separate video on that here over the next week or so as well. Now, also looking at sea ice and surface snow cover. So this is back in September. And you can see as we go through this, the orange kind of building up there, that's that sea ice across the Arctic Ocean. You can also see as we go through, you know, as we went through that last storm system there across the Sierra Nevada, you can see it picked up on some of that snow for the Sierra Nevada. And then we kind of push off to the end of that. It's kind of been melting off over the last few days. But it is that time of year where we start to build, you know, some of the snow across the higher terrain of the west, northern portions, and the sea ice starts to rebuild there also. So if I take a look here at seven day percent precipitation anomaly you'll notice a couple things there's melissa's track right there and it does show the potential again moving back towards the the north american continent a little bit and, and if that does occur you'll be i'll do some more videos on it but you can also see this streak here across the pacific ocean a conalo setting up near the hawaiian islands has been bringing some heavy rain and some model runs but of course it's going to weigh out in the forecast i'm going to show you more on that here in a moment so we don't have good agreement on what's going to happen with that but if we take a look at this morning's European model run, you can see that Konalo there, right across some of the big island, maybe Maui a little bit. But yesterday's run had it closer to a Kauai, and that is a little bit of a different position, as you can see. So lots to figure out with that, but I do have interest out there. I work for Alaska Airlines. We just bought Hawaiian Airlines, and I have family out in Hawaii as well. So that would be a very interesting storm system. And if we take a look at that, look at sea level pressure and six hour precipitation you can see the pacific high with trade winds kind of dominating the weather here as we go through this upcoming weekend but things start to change a little bit there as we go on in towards next week and you can kind of see that pacific high die back a bit and we start to, you know, it weakens, trade winds weaken with it. So as we scroll off into the future a little bit more, you notice this here, the surface high well off to the north and west of the Hawaiian Islands. That helps drop down a low, which will be known as a Kona low here if this does indeed develop. And you can kind of see the positioning of this there and extend some of that heavy rain back down across the Hawaiian Islands. This is that time of year when these Kona lows do get quite active and you can get extremely torrential rainfall with these systems, thunderstorms, gusty winds, all kinds of crazy stuff it's been known to ruin a vacation or two for people going out there just absolutely had their vacations rained out if you go out there during you know some of the months of october november december on into some of the winter months but yeah interesting stuff there i'll be watching that here over the next few days as well so anyway hope you guys are liking this let me know what else you'd like to see me cover here across the planet i'll just try to pick out some fun or some impactful weather and i'll try to do these maybe once or twice a week we'll see how that goes and uh, yeah let me know what you guys think leave some comments below and i'll talk to you guys later.